Lord, I can't drive this home no better than what I'm doing right now. Make no mistake about it. At the white throne judgment, when them books, the Bible, and it says in Revelation, and with the books were open. And out of these books, man were judged. So I, I'm not judging him. I know I'm not. It's just certain stuff I'm just, I'm just not going to do. <laughs> Hello, and I'm in the lesson tonight. We're talking about the principles of wisdom, but we're going to move forward because I'm, I'm going to tap on a few. I'm going to tap on a few of these these popular topics that we see in the news and social realm of, of today. All right, let's prepare to be a blessing. Let's give. We always provide the opportunity at the beginning of service uh, to sow your tithes and offerings. What better way to start out 2024? than sowing seeds for your future harvest, that the Lord will make sure that your cupboards are never bare. Hello, somebody. Somebody need a blessing right now. I can, I can hear you in the spirit. I need a financial blessing. I remember back in 90, I think it was 96, and my bishop, uh, the late Bishop Mac Thomas taught a class, you can give your way out of, out of debt. To, to me, that was, I was like, what, what, what? <laughs> I'm barely making it now. <laughs> what do you mean give give my way out of debt? And that's a carnal way to look at what he said. But Luke 6 and 38 was very applicable to that statement. Give and it shall be given back. You cannot receive a harvest if you never plant any seeds for a harvest. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. So we thank God for you. They're coming down the aisle. Go ahead and drop it in. Even those of you that are watching us live, we thank you uh, for the faithful, those that continue to sow into this ministry. You are indeed a blessing, and we thank God for you. We're going to put you in the hands of our youth ministry in Jesus' name. Amen.
everyone has had an opportunity to give. Let's bless this offering, Lord. We thank you for this that has been received. We pray right now, God, in a return for this seed that has been sowed. Increase it so that those that have sown may receive a harvest in due season. We're praying again for the ministry and for every outreach ministry program that is designed to bless those that are less fortunate. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, clap your hands and tell the Lord, thank you for my seed. Now, our college students are getting ready to go back to school. Uh, and, uh, is it next week or the week after next? You don't know. <laughs> you got to check. They've been out for so long. Uh, I'm, you know, you don't get those kind of breaks when you're in public school. Uh, but anyways, continue to bless them. I want to put it on the screen for you. The cash apps of these wonderful uh, young people. And we'll be adding another one. Uh, young brother Gunner will be getting ready to go to college in the fall of this year, 2024. And uh, and it's, it's important for us to get behind these young people. I'm going to tell you now, uh, if you could have a personal audience with any one of them, they will share with you some horror stories of, of the difficulty that they may be experiencing uh, from the financial side. Uh, I'm in I'm in college right now taking a course and I can tell you that it just never amazes me how expensive used books are. Amen. Used books are in the are in the triple digits. One brother, I hear you, Minister Tim, said it's a scam. And and uh, it's, it, when you live in a profit based uh, focused society and, and uh, if you can look at a capitalistic uh, in every way I just don't believe you got a profit in everything that you do I don't think there should be any profit off of somebody getting sick and that's just my own personal belief I don't think nobody should profit off of that I think that everybody should have the opportunity to receive medical care without struggling uh, to pay for it uh, but let me stop. That's that's another issue. Uh, our announcements for this first midweek press word of 2024. Our good friends, again, Jesus' name will be in their 22nd pastoral appreciation. I'm sorry, their 22nd church anniversary. Amen. And uh, we want you to support. Uh, it's important if you're going, go that Saturday night. You can go that Friday night if you want to. They have guest pastors. Uh, or Saturday night, either one of them. Now, Sunday, you know where you're going to be. Where? Where? Uh, if y'all don't know now, you shouldn't be in nobody else's church but your home church when your home church has service. If you type of person like to miss your church service to go somewhere else, yeah, somebody need to take a belt to your backside. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Some, somebody need to see, take you to the side and explain to you how out of order you are. Uh, but we don't have that problem here. I know we don't. Uh, but uh, some churches do have an issue. They have an issue with that kind of stuff. And uh, I, I would call that, what they say that? Call that uh, 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 two-timing. Isn't that what they say? Two-timing. <laughs> then the Bible say you can't serve two masters. Hello. It's quiet in this Catholic church. Am I in the right church? <laughs> Amen. All right. Again, we thank you for uh, supporting uh, this church. We thank you for your continued uh, prayers. The Lord is definitely uh, with us. If not, we wouldn't be where we are today. Uh, some didn't think we'd make it a week. Uh, some didn't think a year or two. Here it is. Uh, we're going into our what year? How many? No, not, not, not us. Uh, not, not Jesus' name. This is our 16th, 15th, that's right, 15th year. I'm about to add one on the 15th year. And we're grateful for all the Lord has done uh, in those 15 years. All right, let's go into our lesson tonight. We're picking back up. Uh, last week, we've been dealing with uh, principles of wisdom. Principles of wisdom. Uh, so very important for us uh, to talk about and to teach about uh, principles of wisdom. And one of the main reasons is, is what we were talking about 
uh, earlier, all the controversy uh, that surrounds uh, this one particular famous pastor who happens to be a gospel recording artist. They're not in Texas, so it's not one of, not in Texas, but uh, nevertheless, uh, they felt the need to uh, address all of the controversy surrounding the, the, the plan of, uh, I think they had uh, Frankie Beverly and Mays and, and uh, uh, Walk It Out, Walk It Out. Y'all never, I remember that song. <laughs> I mean, they were playing all kinds of stuff, and uh, that's his for his church. He can do whatever he want to do, uh, just like I can do whatever I want to do. Uh, but you can best believe you gonna answer for the things you do. And from a leadership perspective, uh, if there are uh, multiple crowns, and we talked about those crowns, uh, there's when it talks about corruptible crown, there are certain things that you are going to receive for the deeds that you do that were called corruptible, that were not, watch this, profitable for what? The body of Christ. And when we're talking about principles of wisdom, that is one of the very main things we should consistently ask ourselves. Does this edify? Hello, somebody. Uh, I'm, I'm, I told y'all I would not give you uh, certain words and, and not give you a meaning behind it. Let me pull up uh, my uh, notes here. And the, the definition of edify. Okay, I, I know I have my glasses. Did I leave my glasses? All right, I got them. I've got them. First lady's about to give me hers. <laughs> she got on a pair of mine right now. <laughs> now, if, if you ask her, she'll say, these are mine. Listen, the word edify means instruct or improve morally or intellectually. Y'all hear what, did you hear that? This is the basic definition. Now, this is not the Bible definition, but it says, it says, instruct or improve. Someone, watch this, morally or intellectually. So first and foremost, anything that you do should improve something, someone, someplace. What, what's that? The who, the what, the where, the when? Somehow what you are doing should have an improving effect. Hello, somebody. And it definitely, if, if this definition says morally or intellectually, it should not violate, watch this, your morals or your ethics. And let, let's go even further. It should not violate God's statutes, ordinances, commandments. What you do should not violate God's law. And I'm not talking about the Old Testament when I talk about law. I'm talking about God's rule of order. And so you got to understand, this is something that we should be consistently asking ourselves. Now watch this. The Bible definition, the King James Dictionary says, to edify means to construct, build up, or establish do you see this? Romans 14 and 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Do y'all see that? That's Romans 14 and 19. So whatever you do, whatever decision you make, whatever actions you take, you must first send that thing through the edifying micro, micro uh, uh, what is it, magnifying glass to see if this thing will actually, watch this, add to the kingdom or take away. We're going we're gonna to get into the word tonight because I've, I've got several uh, uh, scriptures that I've got, to, I've got to address to help you to, to get a better understanding. Uh, one of, uh, definitely we're going to talk about uh, is Paul's letter to the uh, that first letter to the church at uh, Thessalonica. 
And when he talks about, and I, I have it in the fifth chapter, that you should abstain from all appearances of evil. Now, we're going to talk about this, this word appearance because I think some of us take this in a literal sense. In other words, that you're more concerned about what people think about you rather than you being concerned about what God now watch this, thinks about you and let's say this, knows about you. Hello. So when we are considering some of the things that we're going to, we are doing, and we're still talking about principles of wisdom, we have to, this, this is why, uh, and I've heard this, uh, I was taught this and I teach this. There is a lot of things in this world that really at the surface ain't nothing wrong with it. But that does not mean that it's for you as God's elect. Hello, somebody. I'm in the Bible. His word declares in more than one occasion, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith who? The Lord. So if the Lord is telling us to come out from among them, who is them? The majority is in this category of coming out from among. And so we have to be cautious. And we have to be careful. Watch this. Person, place, or thing. Let's cover this. Who we hang out with. And allow in our inner circle, young people, you need, you really need to pay attention here. If these young people sleep, wake them up. Why? Because when you are young, you have an overwhelming desire to want to fit in. You have an overwhelming desire to want to be liked. I know these young people need to amen this right here because I know what I'm talking about. I've been where you are. And it's dangerous, parents, for you to have your children go out into a ravenous world unprepared for the attack of the enemy. Watch this. At their level. Now, you adults and parents right there, you ain't got no problem with, with peer pressure. I don't care what, what Beckett thinks about my hair. I don't, I don't care uh, about if he got more muscles than me. You don't care about that stuff now. Why? Because you have grown out of it. But you definitely went through it. You had self you have self-conscious issues with your appearance, and you made decisions based off of them. You look back on it now and you see how uh, trivial. They were, but at the time, they were not trivial. And so we have to equip our youth, this is principles of wisdom, how to function in a world that's meant to destroy them. <laughs> All right, our first scripture we read, first, uh, the first chapter of Proverbs, the seventh verse, fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise Wisdom and instruction. They, they don't want anything to do with it. They don't. And if you try to bring some wisdom and some knowledge to them, they will reject you. We talked about the seven pillars of wisdom. The, the um, And I forget her name. I think her last name is Scar or Scar, something like that. This young lady that uh, came up with the seven pillars based off of the women's, uh, Christian women's Bible. And uh, laid them out. But these, there's, just, there's more of this. The fear of the Lord. We pulled that right out of the scripture we read. First, uh, the first chapter of Proverbs, verse 7. We pulled it right up out of there. And when you go look at uh, instruction, because he said they're not a fool, he rejects those things. Knowledge, understanding, discretion, counsel, reproof. They don't want any of that. And this is what my pastor is not calling you a fool. But this is what the word of God says. And so... When we look out, look at the pillars of wisdom, we we have to add to this. Why? Because we know there's more than just one or two. Now look what it says: humility. And I'm gonna have to make I'm gonna have to try to make this a little bit better than this, so that you can you can see my notes up under each each one of these. Integrity, 
stewardship. And I love that one right in the center. Discipline, courage, passion, perseverance. You have heard me say on multiple occasions that God's people are a persevering people. All throughout scripture, you see instance and accounts of where God's people, they persevered against unsurmountable odds and opposition. So what we are doing when we're teaching our children, we're, we're watch this, notice, and I love the illustration of the pillars. Because pillars, and we, you've heard me say this concerning even those, some in the church, you know, there's one particular uh, faith persuasion, they love to confer sainthood on, on certain people that they believe were so impactful uh, in their particular faith. Well, we call each other saints. But you know, there's, there's some folks, uh, they don't act like saints, they act like ain'ts. Now, the decisions that we make as a body and as an individual, now individuals make up the body of Christ. Hello, somebody. We, Romans tells us this now. We, we are individuals, but we are all a part of the same body of Christ and the same spirit that he poured out on the day of Pentecost should reside in you. Now, decisions and certain things that you do, this is why this, this particular bishop is, 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 as they say, what they say, under fire for a decision that he made as the shepherd. Now, let me explain something to you what I'm talking about here. As a shepherd and a leader of a church, you have the authority to lead, guide, instruct, correct, rebuke, and to that church. That's your responsibility. You can best believe if someone were to get up in this pulpit and they do something out of order with set order in this house, I'm going to stop them right there on the spot. I'm going to stop them on the spot. Tell them, you go take your seat. And we're going to move forward. I'm not going to blast them any more than that. I'm, you, you can take your seat. And we're going to move forward. But when you make a conscious decision to do something, and then when you get the negative response, now, understand this. The Bible talks about this. This gospel, it's going to, some folks, it's going to make happy. And some folks, it's going to make downright angry. That's a fact. You cannot become a people pleaser. Don't do that. God has no respect of persons. So we must first and foremost let the first thing that we use to judge who we deal with, how we deal with them, and what we do is the word of God, period. It's the same thing with, with this controversy with, with uh, Bishop, uh, uh, I say I don't, I don't like to call names, uh, but got that big church up in Dallas. And I, I was, I just, I, when I heard his first part of it, I'm not going, I don't run there. In other words, he said, I'm not running down no lies. But then, I, and I, I turned it off. I didn't watch no more. But, but a pastor friend me said, no, you should have kept watching. Because he said he wasn't. But he kept addressing it throughout his sermon. I, my pastor taught me, you don't, don't chase down no lies. What you chasing down a lie for? All you do is give a lie a spotlight when you chase it. It's the same, I use, in, I use the saying that I use an analogy. If you take the gas out of the tank, where is it going if it don't have any gas? But the more attention you put on it, the more gas you pouring in the tank. But the less you pay attention to it, you siphon the gas out of that tank and eventually it will stop and cease to move. Now, these issues that we're talking about is it's in the public eye. It's in the public eye. And I don't wish no ill on no servant of God or so-called that called themselves a servant of God. I don't wish no ill on them. I don't. And I read my Bible now because the word of God tells you and you have to be careful. Receive not an accusation against an elder unless you got two or three 
if not more, witnesses to come and to back up that accusation is dangerous. And I don't care how wrong that elder might be. It is dangerous for you to put your mouth on God's servant. You ought to learn that lesson from dealing with King Saul. You, that's one of the best ways to learn that lesson. David knew enough to know it is I didn't make King Saul a king, and I'm not going to put my mouth on him. I'm not going to try to pull him down. I didn't put him there, and I don't have the responsibility nor the authority to pull him down. We have to be cautious how we allow this thing called social media to influence. <coughs> Watch this. I'm not saying your action, your heart. Because you can best believe some folks, man, I can't be, what was what was T.D. Jakes doing over there with Diddy anyhow? I talked about it's certain places I'm not going. <laughs> I'm sorry. If y'all ever see Pastor Kirkland coming out of a nightclub, he going to be coming out in handcuffs <laughs> with my hands behind my back, and they're going to have a whole, they're going to have some Bibles in their hands, they're going to have some tracks, because <laughs> they done told me to leave, <laughs> and I didn't move fast enough. You're not going to see that. I use this uh, the example I remember years ago. Uh, uh, Bishop Moore told her uh, at, at Mother Moore's home going how, how, how radical his mother was for soul winning. And she went in his room once, once Friday night. It's cause, you know, saints be in the house at 10 o'clock. You a Christian and you outside 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. What you doing out there? Hell, oh, Lord, I didn't mean to go here. What, what is you doing out there? At that hour, it's, if, if it's not with your job, what you doing out that late for? When I was in the world, they told me a certain type of people come out at night. Is that you? What's the attraction with the midnight hour when it ain't in your prayer closet? Hello, somebody. It's just certain things I'm not going to do, and it's certain places I'm not going. Don't get me wrong. I'm not scared, but I've tried my level best to not bring any reproach on God's church. That's my, that's my point. Bishop Moore said to his mother's home, we going to the club. He said, what? <laughs> She's like, put the, he put, get your suit on. I know when I was coming up, you used to wear suits to the club. <laughs> And when I got into church, that's all I had was my club suit. <laughs> Notice I said suit. <laughs> I didn't say suits. And he said mother grabbed their Bibles and they went down to the club. And you know, you got to pay to get in there. But when that bouncer at the door seen that, that mother, that elderly, saintly looking mother coming, you sure you in the right place? <laughs> yes, I'm right where God told me to be. And walked right on past him. He said, well, you got to pay. He, I'm sure he was flabbergasted. Yeah, I would say it would be a case of Daniel in the lounge then. The Lord shut him down. She goes straight in the club, walks straight up to the DJ booth. You know, the DJ booth is usually the highest point in the club. Can you imagine this little old one walking up to, to that stand looking at I need the mic. You can hear the, hear the music going up. <laughs> she, and the DJ gives her the mic. Bishop Moore testified, he said, I was so scared going up in there, I thought the folks was going to kill us. And he says, she, she got the mic and said, anybody in here want to be saved, meet me out the back door. She gave the DJ back the mic, and they went to the back door, exit, and walked out and stood. And Bishop Moore testified, he said, it seemed like we were out there for a long time. He said, but it must have only been about four or five minutes. He said, and I'm telling my, I'm at this point, mom, we got to go. We got to get out of here. He said, right about that time, he, he ready to go. The back door come flying open. This, this man run out, you remind me of my mama. I want to be saved. Not too long after that, here come this young lady running out. Same thing. I can't remember the number he said, but it was more than, than two that left with them she, he said that we, we call uh, uh, D, uh, District Elder Charles Moore and said, we got some souls won't be baptized. Meet us at the church. 
That's the only time. But when you are not in a place, watch this, of ill repute under divine assignment, you put yourself in a position to be, watch this, to have your good evil spoken of. Let's, let's, make this, let's make this plain. What is the responsibility of a preacher? To do what? To spread the what? Gospel message of Jesus Christ, which is what? Good news. Hello? To spread good news. And so if that's not your motivation, now listen, wise, Proverbs declares, is he that wineth souls. Uh-huh. You're not going to see no photos of me at no nighttime. It's dark out, lights all, you know, strobe lights. And I don't don't know if they have disco balls and stuff. You ain't going to see, uh-uh. And I ain't got no Bible in my hand with big old letters on the Holy Bible. (laughs) You have to watch how the enemy, and listen, and and I'm praying for these individuals. You know why? Because that's all Satan wants to see is us attacking who? Us. And somebody said, well, they, I don't know if they are us or not. Well, Jesus said, leave them alone. When your disciples came upon some folks and they were doing uh, all kinds, and Jesus told them, leave them alone. Why did he tell them to leave them alone? And, and when, in, in another instance, he said, there's going to be many that say, Lord, Lord. But in this particular instance, he tells them to leave them alone. We get so caught up with Thinking somebody has to be a part of what we doing right here. You got to be right here. And if you ain't right here, you going to hell. <laughs> we, we, boy, how many of y'all done constructed your own hell and put so many people in it? Mm-mm, not going to do it. That's not, my, that's not my job. Now, I can tell you that there is a surefire hell. And I can take you to the scriptures where he lays it out. All lies, fornicators. I mean, he lays it out. They all, and he said all of them. It don't make no difference what they did. Each one of them is going to wind up in where? The same here. Well, he was a murderer, so he go down there to this. I'm not going to get into how Satan is going to punish and torment those that go there for whatever they did. You can best believe you're going to receive some different kinds of torments and punishments for the deeds that you have done when again in Revelation, when them books are opened. And I believe when the gospel declared that rich man that stepped over Lazarus daily as he came out, living good. But the Bible says he died and opened up his eyes in hell and was what? In torments with an S on the end. So we have to be careful about this. And I don't understand how we as God's, his precious creation, born again believers, can have so so negative, I'm not going to say negative, but ha- it's almost as though it's a hate that comes off of it. When you see somebody that's supposed to be doing right, do wrong, and it's almost as though you have such a hate for that person rather than going down in prayer for them and praying that the Lord would open up their understanding, make ways for them. These are evil times that we're living in. And Satan is doing everything he can under the sun to watch this, steal as many souls as he can. That's his, that's his mission. That's his job. Let's go to the Word of God. Get there. Let's go. To, I'll, I'll talk about it. Go to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22. I want you to see it. Before that, uh, Proverbs 16 and 6 says, let's put it up. There it is. Fear the Lord. And do what? Shun evil. What does shun mean? Not tolerated. What else? Stay away from it. Let me pull it up here. I want you to see it so we can we can get a clear understanding. It, it says to abhor, loathing, revulsion. You ever seen something that you don't like to eat? Or you saw something foul and you be there, like you almost about to, to regurgitate or throw up? That's how you're supposed to respond to evil. It should unsettle you. So to the point you want to get away from it as quick and as possible as you can. 
That's Proverbs 16 and 6. All right, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Let's start at the 19th verse. I want y'all to see this in the Amplified Translation. And I wanted to start at the 19th verse. I know the meat of it is in 22nd, but I want you to see this. He says, do not quench, subdue, or be unresponsive to the working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. You can best believe if you are a born-again believer. I, I like in my, um, in my vehicle, when I'm backing up or I'm pulling into a place, it has a warning system that beeps. And it goes beep, 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 beep. The closer I get to hitting something, the louder and the, and, and the more frequent it beeps. The Holy Ghost is just like that warning system. You about to collide with something that's going to hurt you. And what we are seeing here, look at what Paul said. He said, don't be unresponsive. The amplified translation of this is it on screen. Let me put it on screen for you. There it is. Do not be unresponsive to the working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Hello, somebody. And what the Lord, what other purpose was it for the Lord to give you his spirit, if not for the what John 14 and, and uh, uh, 26, I believe, it says, teach you all things and bring back, go down into the recesses of your mind and your heart and pull back up to the surface those Sunday school lessons, Bible study lessons, revivals, conferences. Bring that word to the surface so that it can benefit you in such a way as to, watch this, keep you from falling. Verse 20 says, do not discern, do not scorn or reject gifts of prophecy or prophecies, spoken revelations, words of instruction or exhortation or warning. They tell me, and I don't know how true this is, they said some woman some prophecies out there prophesied that this thing was going to happen to Bishop Jakes. I don't know how true it is. This is, I, this is me talking in a circle of pastors and they talked. And I said, well, Lord have mercy. That seems like to me that would have sent those that know the power of prayer into overtime, overdrive. Hello, somebody. And I, I, I wonder sometimes if Ezekiel... Uh, 30, 33 or 37, when you talk about seeing the sword coming and you will, now that's what the prophet or prophetess do. They, they can tell you, but you still have free will. You don't have to listen just like your children. You don't warn them of what's going to happen if they keep doing what they're doing. You have warned them. You have even given them vivid accounts of what happened to you doing the same thing. But does that stop them from doing it? <laughs> Help us, Jesus. Lord, we need the Holy Ghost now more than any other time. Look at this. Verse 21 says, but test all things carefully so you can recognize what is good, hold firmly, to that which is good. When you, listen, let me tell you something. When you grab hold of this gospel, which is what? The good news. And you, man, let me tell you, you pull that thing. That's why the writer said, thy word have I hidden in my heart. Why? So that I might not sin against thee. It's a lack of word that's happening in this age we're in right now. And I can tell you of a surety, I, I can see it as clear as the day. Verse 22, look at it. That's where we, we're pulling this. We're, we're extrapolating from this verse right here in 1 Thessalonians 5. Verse 22 says, abstain from every form of evil. Withdraw and keep away from it. Do you, does your Bible say that? Let me pull it up myself. I want to pull this up. In the King James, five. I got to stop taking these glasses off. I can't think. I can read it. Abstain from all appearance of evil. The New Living Translation says, "Stay away from every kind of evil." 
Every kind. So he's telling us it's multiple. It's multiple kinds of evil. Uh huh. It's multiple kinds. And it's Satan's job to make you think evil is good. Y'all remember that scene, don't you? He said, evil is good. And, and, and folks was, what? what? And he kept saying it. And next thing you know, they amen in it. I know that's a comedic scene from that, that movie. But this is how Satan, if he can keep, keep it going in, watch this, in circulation, you will become desensitized to the effect of that evil thing. So to the point, you get comfortable with it. Hello, somebody. But just like Mike Tyson found out with that, that tiger he had, <laughs> it's still a tiger. I don't care how many times they let you hug him, pet him, grab on him. All it takes is one time for that tiger to snap and bite at you, and it could take your life. This is why he said, abstain from every form of evil. Withdraw and keep away from it. I wish we were us Christians, and this may sound funny. I wish we we would act like uh, us when you see us in them horror movies. Y'all know y'all be watching them. I don't watch them, but every time they put a black person in a horror movie, they gone. As soon as they hear that, they they ain't going. Over. Let's go see what it is. <laughs> they go in the opposite direction. Christians are supposed to go the opposite direction when evil is around and it's being promoted. Like it's the front, or, or should I say center stage. I get it. I do. Trust me, I get it. In this digital age we in right now, you folks are snapping pictures, and that picture is, just they say a picture is worth a thousand words. That's not so. Mm. Because I have seen instances of pictures that it look like one thing, but it was wholly opposite of what it looked like. But people will get behind it and they'll put some words to that thing. And before you know it, you got folks screaming for somebody's head. Y'all better see how the enemy works. Satan does not fight fair. And you got to be cautious because you will miss how the enemy is attacking the John uh, uh, 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's his mission. His entire doctrine can be summed up with that one verse of scripture in the book of John, the tempt. He does not want to do nothing but kill, steal, and destroy. And that's why he has, he has deployed demons and evil spirits and hell. How these are all there to do his bidding, to promote his agenda. And if you think you are smarter, <laughs> Then the devil, oh, I'm not glorifying, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, he's got some power. He's got uh, some power, and I'm going to tell you now, that power that he has, he knows how to wield it. He knows how to use it. I hear Proverbs tell him, don't, you, don't be no foolish person thinking you wise, and you so wise that, that pull it, there it is, Proverbs 3, 7, 8, be, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and do what? Depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. We need to learn how to get away from these things that we see happening. And I understand it. I do. But I'm, I'm telling you that this world is meant for destruction. It's meant for destruction. That's why he said he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. This one is meant for destruction. This is why we shouldn't get so attached to it that we can't lose the things of it. Hello? And so we have to be careful. And I would, I would tell you, pray for these, these preachers that are under attack. And some might say they are self-inflicted attacks. Still, your responsibility is to pray. But this does not the Bible tell you, I believe it was Paul that wrote, that we which are spiritual 
and let's, can I say it like I've, like, let me give you my translation. We that are spiritually mature are supposed to do what? Bear the infirmities of the weak. In other words, don't, aren't we supposed to what? Lift up that brother or that sister that has fallen into a fault? And I'm going to tell you right now, such were some of you. And you can, you can best believe your testimony is somebody was praying for you, somebody was fasting for you, somebody was lifting you up to adjust God so that you would not stay in that state. And we have to do the same. We have to do the same. I, I believe that we, we, Satan don't, we should not give him any help. <laughs> Excuse me. We should not give him any help doing what he's doing. We should not show up to that party that I'm talking about where they got somebody, somebody we know or somebody that's a part of the body on a, on a uh, what they call it, a spigot. And th- you know how you roast chicken? You ever seen them chickens roasted up there at Sam's? Or, or, and they got them on there, and it's what? It's slowly turning. Why is it slowly turning? So that it, it, it can be evenly cooked. We, not, we should not be somebody sitting there spinning that wheel, taking turns. Who they got on there today? They got Bishop Jace on there. Look at it. Ooh, Lord, he's getting good and ripe. Who they got on there today? They got, oh, they got that singer over there. Yeah, you got that big church. They just slowly turn. You want your turn? Come on over here. You can get you a turn in here too. I hear what the word of God says. Abstain. Shun. Run away from. All appearances of evil. And we have to make sure these principles of wisdom tell us, and, and when we go to it, let's go to Proverbs. Well, no, we're going to James. We're going to go to James first. Did I put it up there? I didn't. Yes, I did. James 4 and 7. James 4 and 7. Did I go past that? There it is. James, the fourth chapter and the seventh verse. Y'all should know, y'all know this one by heart, don't you? <laughs> you know that last part, but do you know the first part of that scripture? We'll quote what James 4 and 7 says. It says, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. That's what he said. No. Read it from the beginning. What does it say? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. We need to understand something that to submit yourself to God is to submit yourself to his will. Submit yourself not only to his will, but his word is his express will. So once we realize that something is, watch this, here it is, out of the will of God. And how do we know if it's out of the will of God? It is out of the word of God. If you, if you want to, how, how do I know if, if this is in the will of God? If it's not in the word of God, it's not in the will of God. We like to get deep at the wrong times. And we like to play these games. And I'm telling you, Satan does not play games. You have to be cautious. James 4 and 7 says, and he makes it very, very plain to us. I love how, and when I hear folks <laughs> quote this scripture, I was like, you need to go back to the first clause of that scripture. Because I believe therein lies the problem with us resisting the devil. The first part of submitting yourselves, a fully submitted, watch this, a fully submitted wife to her husband won't even entertain somebody trying to hit on her. She'll give that joker such a look that he he won't say another word. He'll turn and go the opposite way because he know ain't no opportunity there. Because what? She is fully submitted to her husband and watch this, thereby submitted to the will of God. When a person is fully submitted to God, they will not entertain evil. I hope I'm helping somebody. Verse 
Back up to verse 6. James' is fourth chapter. Look at this. And this is why we have no excuse. We have no excuse because he already makes preparation for us. Look at verse 6 in James 4. He said, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. So it doesn't matter where you are presently. If you're struggling here, if you're having an issue of submission to God, God's grace is sufficient. You go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm deficient here. What do they, what do they tell you, uh, sisters, uh, and even some brothers, you, you cold all the time. And it's summertime and you cold. What they say, you might be what deficient? Iron deficient. Am I right? Hello, you weak brothers, sisters, you and you melanated. And they, they don't say, well, well, I just seem to, man, I'm getting so drained. And they're going to say, you what? You D, uh, vitamin D deficient. How do they know this? By you describing how you are feeling. You're describing your environment and the doctor is listening and he said, well, that sounds very close to this right here. And so what the word of God does is you, you come to God and say, Lord, this right here, I know this is what your word says, but I, I, I know I'm deficient here. And so what does the doctor do, do? They prescribe you some iron pills. Or to get to, do they still sell Geritol? I know when I was coming up, it was Geritol. Uh, we, we thought that was something special as kids, and we snuck in our mother's Geritol and was and were bouncing off the walls. <laughs> we thought that was, you know what we thought it was. <laughs> bouncing off the walls. And not knowing that's dangerous because you, you have too much iron and it can have, the, it can have a, 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 a very uh, different effect. And so when the doctor prescribes you that, I never forget <laughs> my doctor. He told not not for these right here, but they they he had, I don't like taking no no kind of narcotic for no pain. I don't care how how intense the pain is. And he prescribed me. They called it Schedule Two. They you know they Schedule Two drugs. They, those that's that narcotic that's that narcotic type of painkiller. No sir, I don't like anything that takes me out of my right mind. And I said, I said, you can prescribe it, I'm not going to take it. Well, he said, well, I guess I'm only a doctor for nothing. <laughs> I think I ought to know what I'm, what I'm prescribing you. He said, well, it's on you. Whether you use it or not, it's on you. And this is what we're, we need to understand. The word of God is here. It's been provided to you. But now whether you apply it or not, that's entirely up to you. These principles of wisdom will help you to understand. And some will tell you, some of you, you're going to get upset at this kind of teaching because you're going to see yourself. You are going to see yourself. And you're not wise. Let me skip down. Look at wisdom and growth. If you struggle in these areas right here, look what it I enjoy being exposed to diverse viewpoints. If you do not like hearing diverse viewpoints, or viewpoints that are contrary to your one-track mind thing, train of thinking. You're not wise. If you have a difficult time keeping friendships, don't nobody want to be your friend. Because <laughs> you know how some folks are? They like a roller coaster or seesaw, up and down. These are signs of a lack of wisdom. Number three. It is important that I understand my actions. If you don't understand your actions, you will never accept the consequences. If you blame shift, it's always someone else's fault and never yours. That's a lack of wisdom. Ooh, who's, who's got the mirror up right now? Lord help. I told you what the remedy is. His grace is sufficient. And any person that when you do something, watch this, and it's presented to you that you are out of order, you are wrong, and your first response is to attack the individual that brings and presents to you what you have done wrong, you are clearly spiritually immature, <laughs> Excuse me. and really in most cases, you are naturally immature. 
I'm, te- I'm learning to teach. Parents, you teach your children this. Teach them this early. I'm, I'm wrapping it up. So y'all got to fix that clock back there. That's why I was late uh, starting, because that clock back there is stuck. Uh, but I should, I got the digital one right there. But uh, you teach your children, teach them early how to accept responsibility and accountability for their actions. And parents, if you are, watch this, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in, your, in the same house, your children will exploit that. Why? Because they see division between mama and daddy. They will exploit it every time. And if you are not wise enough to see how manipulative your children are, when it comes to this, you are nothing but a pawn. And you will, watch this, you will send them down because you refuse to hold them accountable for their actions. And this is a problem. We, we see this in, in, and listen, you in your 30s and still will not accept responsibility for your actions, your own actions. Blame shifting. Huh? What did Adam do when the Lord came to him and asked him, what, what, what's your problem? Did I not give you instruction as to what you could and could? As a matter of fact, he only told him one thing not to do. It's something about that, <laughs> that forbidden area. That forbidden area is attractive. They say, don't go to that door over there. And wh- why do you keep looking at it then? <laughs> I, want, I bet you it's as bad as they say it is. Adam responds back, that woman, <laughs> that woe man that you gave me, he would not accept the responsibility of his actions. And we see the same spirit in this age we're living in now. Theologians call it that Adamic spirit, that Adamic spirit, that spirit of blame shifting. And his son did the same thing. Didn't Cain do the same thing? Would not accept the responsibility of presenting an unacceptable offering to God. And instead of him saying, you're right, Lord, I was wrong for half doing it. Parents, don't we see this in our children sometimes? They, you give them instructions on what to do, and they, they do it, but they have to do it. Or they take their time to do it. I, this generation is something to me. We, this is why we have to pray for them. My mother was, long before I ever met my first drill sergeant, I, I was under the tutelage of drill sergeant Linda Kirkland. Because if you act like, when I was in basic training, if you act like you didn't like what the drill sergeant said, drop! Do push up. And he was like, but Linda Kirkland, she'd come across your back with that broomstick. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or she'd grab whatever she could in her area and bust you right upside your head. <laughs> As my brothers and sisters will tell you. So when we are talking about these, the principles of wisdom, the Bible gives us all that we need to watch this, to be thoroughly furnished to make the decisions that we know best benefits the kingdom. I got some more, but I'm, we'll, hit the, we'll, we'll deal with these next week, that four, fifth, and sixth one. All right. Thank you for watching. Those of you that have been with us on tonight, we hope the word has blessed you. We're going to continue in this lesson Uh, principles of wisdom. Why? Because it's so important for us to understand this. When we see so many so-called Christians going astray and in error, is it that there's a lack of word or is it that there's a lack of word in them? And that's the simple question to ask. So what are we to do as a body of believers? Are we to just leave them on the side of the road in error it's too much word to tell us what we're supposed to do as Christians and we've got to learn how to apply the biblical remedy for 
every situation. True wisdom lets us know that for every situation that we will ever come in contact with, there is a biblical remedy for it. The problem is we don't want to take the time to search out that remedy. God bless you. We hope the word has blessed you tonight. If you didn't get a chance to sow a seed, do so right now. It's on the screen. Multiple ways to give. We'll see you Sunday morning live at 10 a.m. And we hope that you have a wonderful new year. And until